Well, we've got a very simple definition of cloud um, uh, because the, the way we uh, the way we do things, we use a cloud computer effectively as a server in the cloud, um, rather than what we tend to see around the place, which is a lot of um, storage-based services being synonymous with cloud with cloud services. So we're very much a, a, a server-based cloud, and that's what it means to us. We want to provide every individual with a cloud service. Um, our model is that we work with operators and uh, service providers uh, to take our platform, make it available to all of their customers in their hopefully millions, um, and provide a very simple, easy to use, but understandable um, cloud service. Well, I think scalability is all down to architecture, number one. Um, and we very much focus on having a, a linear growth pattern so that literally any number um, into the billions is possible. Um, but it also has to be balanced with scalability with uh, security and you have to balance scalability with performance. So if you get those three things right, uh, you have a robust uh, um, service to offer people. We're very clear on this and we think that consumers need to work with a trusted provider of services and all of our analysis uh, has shown that the people that consumers really trust are their telecom operators and some, in some instances more so than even their bank. So our focus is to work with telecom operators, whether they be mobile or, or fixed line operators, to offer this service as part of that trusted relationship. Um, as part of their, their package of services um, that they're already enjoying and they're already take, having a transactional and financial relationship. Well, pri Private Planet, you know, it's called Private Planet for a reason. Um, uh, and the privacy piece is, uh, is synonymous with the security piece. Um, and we believe very strongly that what's, what's happened in the past is people have adopted services like Facebook, like Twitter, social networks, and they've been pushing out their data, giving access to their stuff um, in, a, in a rather haphazard fashion. Um, and what Private Planet, the platform, allows an individual to do is to take back ownership of their data, decide whom and, and you know, to whom and where things are published, and also have the ability to bring them back again. So, for example, when you publish a file or, a let's say, a photograph to the internet through Private Planet, you only ever publish the link, so if you want to have that link taken down, then you're in control of it. There's been a whole lot of revenue just leaking um, out of the door, out of the model, because of service providers, you know, point solutions, um, uh, uh, um, gaining revenues from providing services that could easily be provided by the telco infrastructure. They've got the billing mechanism, they've got the customer relationship, they put, you know, they send information to and fro with their customers in that trusted way already. So here's an opportunity for an operator or a telco to pull back some of the revenues that have been leaking. And I think everyone did get very excited about the cloud. Um, there are plenty of big companies spending lots and lots of marketing dollars telling everyone they need a cloud, yeah. but no one's really saying, but the cloud means this, and here's how to do it, and here's how, how, to, here's how to make sense of it. Here's how to get some value from it, from the cloud, you know, per se, for, as a consumer, but also here's how to derive some value as a business, um, leveraging cloud services for additional consumer revenues. In most people's minds, the cloud means some storage somewhere, you know, whether it's a vault or a locker, whatever people want to call it. Um, with it I think it's a combination of things. Um, I think to change people's... The big adoption will be about behavioural change. Um, you only achieve behavioural change when you make things easier than they are already. Now, it's quite easy to send an email. It's quite easy to attach a photograph to an email or a file. But it's even easier just to drag it onto a contact's face and know that they've received it when you send it and have a record of that um, transaction having occurred. So everything, everything we do is very much about ease of use. I don't think it is about one thing. I think for one person or a group of people, it'll be about storage of photos. 
For another group of people, it'll be about ease of communication. For other groups, it'll be about community and, and sharing things. So I think there's a, whole, there's a whole list. And if you take a look at what Private Planet's doing, it very much dips into all of those areas of communication uh, and storage that will make life easier for consumers and for, and for businesses alike. This, this opening and closing of the wall garden is an interesting one because when everyone went down, and this happened with the web as well, when every, everyone started with the wall garden approach, you had these online shopping malls and you had to register to get in, you know, and it's, it doesn't, doesn't actually work. You know, I think what, what works is a hybrid, is a combination of the two, where you have the security of the service being absolutely sacrosanct but you also have an, an ease of use and an ability and, a, and, a, and an approachability to get people to use the thing in the first place. And that's why this, the model that we've adopted is very much the kind of freemium model. If you, want, if you want consumers and if you want customers to use your service, you've got to give them access to it and then find a, the right moment, the right tipping point to start making it a charged service, for example. We're, we're, we're working and talking with, with companies in South America, North America, Asia, right across Europe, uh, and North Africa. Um, and they're, they're, all, they're all at dim, sim, you know, different stages. Um, and one of the things that we're finding is that where they have made an investment in, for example, storage infrastructure, we can leverage that um, because we don't, we're pretty agnostic about the actual storage. As long as we can manage it, then we can, we can use some existing infrastructure or we can provide infrastructure for a brand new entrant or we can work with third parties and, uh, and, uh, uh, and systems integrators, for example, um, who may want to have a shared risk approach to building, building out some infrastructure. So I wouldn't say any particular market is hotter than another. Mm -hmm. I think they have different characteristics. There are some obvious attractions in some of the emerging markets by sheer virtue of the number of people um, there are about the place, and this is very much a, a numbers and volume driven business. Well, we're in the process now of taking a very simple message out to operators, which is, you know, we will provide the platform. We're not looking for big license fees. We're not looking for big costs of entry. We just want to get going on it. And I think the one, the winners in the early days, are going to be the ones that take a small jump, um, get behind it and start driving some revenues that are being leaked out to, to third parties at the moment.